Hi, I'm Sean Waterman and you're watching FedScoop TV. Today, we're at the Museum for the 8th Annual Lowering the Cost of Government with IT Summit. And I'm joined by Gary De Prater, who is the Director of Simplivity Federal. Hi, Sean. Thanks, Gary. Thanks for having me. So um, let's start by talking about what advances in IT agencies can use to drive cost savings. Okay, so obviously I represent Simplivity Federal, so I'm a little bit biased <laughs> on what uh, technologies uh, agencies should consider. Uh, but I clearly think uh, hyperconvergence, because Simplivity is a market leader in true hyperconvergence technologies. And if you really think about, you know, kind of the opportunity for savings today in the enterprise, uh, in enterprise IT, you have to take a step back and say where the opportunity is, where you're going to get your biggest bang for the buck. And if you think about it, 44% of any enterprise IT organization, 44% of the infrastructure and operation costs reside in the data center. Okay, so that's the biggest opportunity. And that's not just a federal statement, that's an enterprise IT statement. And that's why Tony Scott releases the OMB mandate uh, saying uh, in, on August 1st, saying, hey, look, data center optimization initiative is important, right? Because the biggest cost savings can be achieved there. And that's why Terry Halverson, you know, one of his eight pillars of the way forward, uh, calls out data center optimization. So, you know, what does hyperconvergence do in this space? Well, it's a highly disruptive, not only technology, but architecture and operating model that drives sort of massive disruption within the infrastructure stack. So you're going to consolidate. No longer are the days are you going to manage servers, uh, storage, uh, appliances in the data center, you know, backup software. It is all going into you know, commodity x86 servers that are being run on software, highly automated software. So this is a natural evolution of the data center. Um, and it's, uh, it's highly disruptive. And if you look at uh, what IDC reports, IDC is saying that hyperconvergence is going to be growing or is growing at 65% compound annual growth for the next five years. And it's being fueled, as you might expect, initially in the private sector. And we're seeing high adoption in the private sector of this model. And uh, we'll, of course, you know, government will, will adopt it as well. So huge benefits um, in some Forrester studies that we've conducted with our customers. 224% uh, ROI, 6.6 .6, uh, uh, month, you know, payback, a 3.7, you know, uh, a 3.7 uh, times TCO reduction. So it's just too compelling, and that's what's great about technology. You get these disruptive trends like it's mobility and cloud. Well, what's happening in the data centers? Hyperconvergence is going to drive massive disruption and, and massive efficiency. And why is that sort of uh, modernization so important for agencies? Gosh, I mean, uh, where, where do you begin with that question? Um, you know, cost, um, you know, uh, simplifying complexity, um, automating it, um, you know, making it easier to manage, uh, power, space, cooling, all, all the reasons that we've read about and our agency customers live, you know, every day. Um, so, you know, it's, it, it's, you know, legacy infrastructure is, is too expensive and, and too complex to, to manage. And uh, so, you know, that's the compelling reason. And, and if, you, if you think about it, you know, that's why agencies are moving to cloud or enterprises are moving to cloud. It's, um, it's, it's, it's not, it's, they don't want to deal with managing appliances and managing complexity anymore, right? They want something that's quick, efficient. You can spin up your infrastructure and spin it back down. And essentially that's what hyperconvergence does is on-prem is it provides that level of automation and, uh, and flexibility uh, for your on-prem data center. Um, so you know, th that's, that's, you're gonna have two choices essentially going forward uh, for workloads that go you know, uh, off-site, that, that'll be the going to the cloud, which is already happening. And now because of hyperconvergence, you know, those uh, applications and services that are sensitive and you wanna keep on-prem, uh, again, the days of bundling storage and compute are gone. You'll have a hyperconverged data center that's highly automated and offers the same benefits as cloud, where you spin up your applications and you you meet the needs of the mission in the mission. You know, spinning up uh, applications of VMs and service in a matter of minutes versus today, which takes you know weeks. I mean, weeks to provision applications. So I think, and that's the real reason that people are going to the cloud, and that's the reason people will will, will go to hyperconvergence. Let's talk about security. Mm -hmm. um, do investments, I mean, investments in security obviously have their own value, sure. but can they help save money as well in the long run? Well, obviously, again, I'm tilted towards hyperconvergence, and while it's not you know, a cyber play, 
um, it has cyber implications. So let me give you a, kind of a few examples. Uh, in, in the hyperconverged infrastructure uh, that will, you know, will run your data center uh, in the future, um, let's look at some basic things. So the first one is um, you know, data at rest. So there are encryption technologies that you know, will protect your data at rest in a hyperconverged platform. Uh, number, number two, um, you, have, uh, you, know, you minimize because you're, not, you know, you're reducing on average your footprint of stuff, you know, servers, appliances, so you're not doing patch management anymore. Uh, and you're reducing your physical footprint by 10 to 1, I mean, in a hyper-converged world. So your tax surface, number two, your tax service is a lot lower and you don't have to worry about all the patching. Uh, and then number, number three is, you know, resiliency. I mean, that's a really, really key, key thing. And I have an example of that where, you know, your backup and your DR, um, your high availability, I mean, you can, you can restore in a matter of seconds and not, you know, hours or days. And we have a real-life example, obviously not referenceable, where it's a, it was a regional bank and they got hit by um, a ransomware attack. Uh, and so the story goes by the CIO that he got a call from his CFO on a Friday afternoon as he's heading home and said, you have to get right back here. You know, we have, uh, we're undergoing a ransomware attack. He asked some questions. He quickly pulled over and literally fired up his laptop. And because he had all of their, their data center running in a hyper-converged infrastructure, in this case it was, it was us, Simplivity, um, he had the ability to implement uh, all along uh, backups every 15 minutes in a production environment. So he wasn't doing maintenance, you know, from noon to you know 8 a.m. moving data in a hyperconverged infrastructure. You know, he was doing backups every 15 minutes. He checked his last backup was eight minutes old. He did a full restore within a matter of, of minutes, and uh, the ransomware attack was over. So you know, while it, hyperconvergence isn't a cyber play, the implications of the automation. Uh, for you know that, that hyperconvergence offices offers in your data center infrastructure um, has implications that that are cyber related. So it's a great story, and um, you know one that uh, that is compelling. Fascinating stuff. Yeah. Um, one last question. Certainly. Other than hyperconvergence, can you talk about a couple of emerging technology trends or or, or things you see out toward the horizon that are going to help agencies? Well, I think you know, you know, cloud is again. I, I I come from that data center space, so I'm not trying to evade the question or kind of pitch you know the hyperconvergence. But I think agencies and enterprises are trying to decide right now, um, you know, what use cases right are appropriate uh, in these new operating models. And um, you know, I think if you look at, uh, and I, and I think it's around security and control. I think that's kind of the struggle um, um, on what's going to be reside in the cloud and what's going to reside on prem. So if you think of use cases like when there's data at rest archiving, uh, for example, you know, perfect use case you know, to, to uh, introduce great efficiencies and, and move that to the cloud, um, but your, you know, your, 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 your current uh, workloads that are highly sensitive and you need better control, you need to maintain control and, and better security, um, I think are, are going to you know going to be transformed by by uh, hyperconvergence. So, you know, that I'm, I'm obviously uh, not a technologist by trade, uh, but um, I see this as probably the largest opportunity. I mean, this what's happening right now, um, the innovation and disruption um, are, are as big as when we, you know cloud and virtualization were introduced. So I think it's all coming together. It's a really exciting time uh, to be part of uh, IT and also IT in the federal government with uh, the leadership of guys like Tony Scott and Terry Halverson and kind of the direction they're taking uh, agencies. Uh, I think it's, it's a right time for technology to achieve the results that they want. It's a great place to finish. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate it. You've been watching FedScoop TV. You can check us out on our YouTube channel or our website, fedscoop.com.